Hello, my name is Kate and welcome to the local history of Northern Kentucky. In honor of President's Day, we're going to take a look back at the presidential visits over the years and some of the stories from their appearances in the Tri-State. This will feature photos from our Faces and Places database. And the earliest photos that we have of presidential visits in Faces and Places are from Franklin Roosevelt's 1938 visit. And um, on July 8th, 1938, Mayor Nolman declared a holiday in the city of Covington in anticipation of the president's appearance that day. And Roosevelt was traveling to the area by train from Marietta. And before he arrived, the head of the Secret Service, who was Colonel Starling, um, he came before him to select a site for the president to speak. And he was between Davu Park and the Latonia racetrack, and he ended up picking the racetrack. And when his train pulled into the station at Union Terminal, Governor Happy Chandler greeted the president and um, rode with him back to the track. And Governor, um, or Congressman Brent Spence and Senator Park Barkley were also there. And the day after the event, the Kentucky Post noted, the president apparently is in fighting trim, his bronzed face giving on the impression of good health and his smile radiating cheer to all. And they also noted that many event goers were surprised by the heavy regulations um, of the event that were imposed by the Secret Service, including the regulation of soft drinks and the fact that they were not able to be served in bottles that day. And we have a couple of photos of President Eisenhower from our Kentucky Post collection. And the one on the right is from his visit to Lexington in 1956. And this shows him speaking at the Phoenix Hotel. And First Lady Mamie Eisenhower, Mrs. Pearl Pace, and Louie Nunn, who was his um, state campaign manager, they're also pictured there. And after their visit to the hotel, there was a torchlight parade that was held, and this was um, to be reminiscent of presidential campaigns of the 19th century, but instead of torchlights, they used flashlights. And so they left the hotel for the Coliseum, and this was where the University of Kentucky band played, and the president was greeted by Governor Chandler and Mayor Shelby Kincaid of Lexington. And he made an address there, and then he left for the airport um, to head back to the White House. And after Eisenhower's death on March 28th, 1969, in Washington, D.C., a funeral was held and his body was placed on a special train um, to go back to his hometown of Abilene, Kansas. And the train um, traveled through about half of the country and traveled across half the country. And these are a couple of photos that were taken um, when the train passed by in Newport and um, onlookers were, were crowded around. And John F. Kennedy visited the area in October of 1960 during his presidential campaign. And there was an estimated crowd of over 13,000 people who stood at the intersection of Park and Court Streets in Covington, um, hoping to catch a glimpse of the car as it passed by. And a note in the newspaper the day prior to his arrival said that this would be the first appearance in Covington by a presidential nominee since William Jennings Bryan in the early 1900s. Oops. And um, Kennedy arrived in Covington about 45 minutes late because the motorcade route had changed at the last minute. And instead of coming to Covington um, across the CNO Bridge, from Cincinnati, he made an unexpected detour to Newport. And while he was there, he visited um, Gold Star Mothers whose sons had been killed in military service. 
and they were Ethel Style, um, Mrs. Ethel Style, Mrs. John Wagner, and Mrs. Neelan Shea, and um, they're pictured here where um, Kennedy met them at the home of Mrs. Style in Newport, and um, while he was there, he ate cookies and drank coffee with them, and he asked each of the ladies about her son, his name, and when he was um, killed in the war. And Kennedy told them that peace is the most important issue of our time, and that the best way to preserve peace is to be strong. And when he got up to leave, he said, you ladies are really terrific. And then he asked Mrs. Style if the cookies were homemade. She said that they were not, and that the party had come up on such a short notice that she was compelled to buy them. Um, and then two years later, Kennedy made another visit to the area, and this time was as president in October 1962. And then um, this visit, a Kentucky Post account noted that this would be the first visit to Northern Kentucky by a sitting president since Roosevelt back in 1938. And this visit that he made was on behalf of Wilson Wyatt, who was running for Senate against Republican incumbent Thruston Morton. And then there on the right is William Deckert, and he's pictured with a couple of photos that were autographed by the President and First Lady. And Lyndon Johnson visited the area several times. Um, once was in 1960, and then he also visited in 1964. And Air Force One landed at 4.35 p.m. on October 16, 1964. And it was noted that when he got off the plane, he had a Stetson in his hand and a smile on his face as he greeted, or as he was greeted with the cheers of a large crowd. And he was formally introduced to the crowd by Governor Edward Breathitt, and during his speech, he had a lot of praise for Kentucky, saying that Kentucky is the father of great governors, and one of the finest in the land is Governor Breathitt. He also praised former Congressman Brent Spence, who was standing with him on the speaker's platform, saying that none have ever stood higher in my estim estimation than Brent Spence. And then he added a few more visits this year, and I'll be el eligible to call Kentucky my home. He continued on saying, sometime when I can stay longer, I'm going to write myself an invitation to come back and visit Covington for an afternoon. And then referring to his um, visit to Ohio later in the day, he said, we're mixing bluegrass and buckeyes today. I hope this will result in a victory. Um, then he moved on to more serious political topics and um, discussed poverty and uh, foreign affairs and other government policies and he said that he liked to look into the eyes of his bosses, the voters. And then later that evening um, President Johnson addressed a crowd at Government Square in Cincinnati and then he headed off to Dayton, Ohio. And in the photo here on the left Marie Turner is pictured with Lady Bird Johnson and then um, in the 1967 photo on the right is 11-year-old Michael Mashmeyer holding up a letter that he had received from the First Lady. And when he blew up the candles on his birthday cake that year, Michael had wished that the baby that Lucy Baines Johnson was expecting would come that day. And his birthday wish came true, and on June 21st, Lucy gave birth to 8 pound, 10 ounce Patrick Lyndon Nugent, the first grandchild of um, President Johnson and the First Lady. And Michael, who was going into the fifth grade at the time, was thrilled to share a birthday with Lucy's son and had hoped that, that she would name the baby Michael. And so he wrote a letter of congratulations to Lucy and her husband, Pat Nugent, and addressed it to her in the hospital in Austin, Texas. And about a month later, um, a letter came from Lady Bird Johnson in the mail, and the letter reads, 
Dear Michael, Lucy and Pat join us in thanking you most sincerely for your thoughtful remembrance in the name of Patrick Lyndon Nugent. We are pleased that you share our delight at his happy arrival and greatly appreciate your generous gesture, which will share this joy with others. Sincerely, Lady Bird Johnson. Michael's mother was so excited to see the letter, she said I could hardly wait until Michael opened it up. Richard Nixon had several visits to the area. One was in 1970 um, for the All-Star Game at Riverfront Stadium, which had just opened a couple of weeks prior. And he pitched baseballs to the catchers of the American League and National League teams. And then he um, threw a few baseballs up into the stands for fans to catch. He then returned to his seat to watch the game with his wife, Pat. Um, baseball commissioner Bowie Kuhn, and um, Mr. and Mrs. Francis L. Dale of Cincinnati. And the photograph there on the far right shows Nixon at the funeral of Whitney Young in 1971, a civil rights leader who was a native of Shelby County, Kentucky. And along with Nixon, um, he had been an important advisor to Presidents uh, Kennedy and Johnson, and uh, Whitney Young had drowned while swimming with friends in Nigeria where he was attending a conference. So the president um, sent a plane to Nigeria to collect Young's body, and then he traveled to Lexington to deliver the eulogy at his funeral. And these photos of Pat Nixon are from a March 1970 visit that she made to the Tri-State. And a large crowd and several local political figures were there to, to greet her when she um, arrived at the airport. And James Rhodes, the governor of Ohio, called her a gracious and kind lady. And an Inquirer article noted that she wore a beautifully cut electric blue coat showing just the kind of taste a first lady should have. And you can see the coat in the pictures here. And while she was here, she visited the Children's Convalescent Home in the Fairview Community Center. And it was noted that she hugged a child at every opportunity. A Cub Scout making a wooden boat, a girl who was in a body cast, and a boy who handed her red roses. And... Um, this is pictured there at the top where she's holding the flowers that David Benzinger of Edgewood handed to her at the airport. And her excitement in receiving the flowers brought a big smile to David's face. And after the first lady had left, Becky, who was one of the children at the convalescent center said, I wish she was my mother. And then, um, maybe feeling a little bit guilty, she said to the reporter, No, no, don't write that down. That won't be in the paper, will it? My mother might not like that. Gerald Ford had quite a few visits to the area as well, and one of those was after his presidency in October 1978 when he visited NKU. And he's pictured at the university in... Um, the top middle photo there um, with Gene Snyder, Larry Hopkins, and Dr. A.D. Albright. Gerald Ford gave a speech in support of Hopkins' congressional campaign to a standing room only crowd in Regents Hall. And a couple of the photos from the early 1990s also show Gerald Ford with son Steve, who was the associate vice president of Turfway Park in Florence at that time. And Betty Ford is pictured on the right with Lucy Winchester in a Kentucky Post photograph that was taken in Washington, D.C. And this particular photo is not dated. However, she did make a visit to Cincinnati in 1976. And during the visit, she campaigned for her husband and promoted a group called No Greater Love, which served the elderly, veterans, and the underprivileged. One of the people who greeted her when she arrived was Johnny Bench, who was a member of the board, board of directors for No Greater Love. And many of the photos that we have in the database of Jimmy Carter 
are from a 1979 visit to Bardstown. And the photo on the top left shows Carter as he'd climbed up on top of the limo and he rode the motorcade down Highway 31, which was, um, it was noted that this was to the joy of onlookers, but much to the dismay of the Secret Service agents. Um, the photo on the bottom left shows the farmer family of Cynthiana, Ryan, Gail, Tracy, and Dell holding up an autographed photo of President Carter. Tracy Farmer worked as a controlling owner of two banks, the National Bank of Cynthiana and the Bank of Mount Vernon, and Farmer became a political activist during the Carter campaign and managed the Kentucky delegation to the Carter presidential inauguration in Washington, D.C. So it was his job to introduce members of the Kentucky delegation to the new president at the main inaugural ball. And when the campaign began, Tracy Farmer became interested, although he hadn't um, he hadn't before took an active part in a political campaign. And he became Carter's campaign manager for the Kentucky 6th Congressional District and then became a member of Carter's National Finance Committee. And during his time working for the campaign, he met with Jimmy Carter a number of times in Plains, Georgia. And Tracy Farmer was also under um, consideration for a position in Carter's cabinet. But when he took, or when he learned about this, he took himself out of the running and um, said that he wasn't ready to, to leave Cynthiana to work in the administration. And pictures of Rosalind Carter also appear in our Faces and Places database. In the photo where she's seated, the Secret Service agents are standing behind her, and Governor John Y. Brown is pictured to the right, and Boots Randolph's piano player is um, seated there as well. And this was taken in Louisville, and one of her visits to Cincinnati was in 1980, when she addressed a crowd of 5,000 people at Fountain Square to campaign for her husband's reelection, and also um, to promote the need of mental health programs. And when she arrived at Lincoln Airport for this visit, she was greeted by David Mann, who was the Democratic Vice Mayor at the time, and he gave her a key to the city. And she was also greeted by Ohio Democratic Chairman Paul Tips, among others. And Ronald Reagan is uh, next on the list, and he paid a visit to the area during an October 1980 campaign stop. State Senator Jim Bunning, who was Reagan's area campaign coordinator, said that he was satisfied with the turnout of the crowd, and it was noted that many in the crowd seemed to be from Ohio, and a sizable number were members of the local 100 um, Teamsters Union, and they had endorsed Reagan and presented him with a Teamster cap and jacket which he's holding up in the photo on the bottom left. And he was smiling and gesturing to the word president, which they'd embroidered on his jacket. And he's pictured in the middle photo with Governor Martheline Collins. And this undated photo comes from our Kentucky Post collection. And then um, several years later, he came for another visit in 1985. And during this visit, he toured the Ivorydale manufacturing plant in Cincinnati. And he had visited the plant to promote a tax package and then had lunch there. And he also gave a speech at the Clarion Hotel. And prior to this speech, he was greeted by Cincinnati Reds owner Marge Schott. And President Reagan um, enthusiastically cheered for the Reds and then hugged Marge Schott on his way up to the podium um, for his speech. And after the speech, Shot presented a couple of gifts to him, um, a baseball autographed by Pete Rose, a Reds team jacket, and a Shotzi hat signed with woofs and licks for the Reagan family dog, Lucky. We have a couple of photos from George H.W. Bush's visits to the area. Um, the first photograph on the right shows Bush with an unidentified child at the at the Cincinnati airport. Um, this photo was was not dated. And then 
Um, the one on the bottom left corner shows employees at Newport Steel waiting for Bush to speak. And this was from a 1984 visit that Bush had made when he was vice president. And during the October visit, he um, first went to Elder High School for a question and answer session. And um, he did that before making his way to Wilder. And George and Barbara Bush toured the plant with the firm's president, Clifford Borland, and manager of melting operations, Bill Brawley. And um, the steel mill had reopened in 1981 with the aid of a federal grant. So he was um, met with applause when he addressed the employees, saying that this represents the best in local and state and federal partnership. And this brings us to the end of our presidential photos from Faces and Places. And we always appreciate photograph donations. So if you have historic photos of people, places, and events around Northern Kentucky, um, please scroll here to the bottom of um, the Faces and Places page and click on the Submitting Photos link to learn more about donating or loaning, uh, loaning photographs to scan. And thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please stop by the local history and genealogy department. Give us a call at 859-962-4070 or send us an email at history at kentonlibrary.org. Thanks.